All right, guys, we're back at Jimmy's Kitchen, and guess what? We got some new camera equipment. Look, look at this. We got this nice new A cam here, B cam. It's all happening. I know a lot of you guys complaining about the sound. We got this laugh mic even. You know, it's getting more and more professional, more and more beautiful, just like my face. Just like my face. Today, we're gonna make my favorite breakfast. It's super easy. Just scrambled eggs with kimchi and also a miso soup. This can't be any easier and it's super comforting and uh, it's gonna be very Asian of a breakfast. So now, first, of course, you just crack these two beautiful eggs in a nice little bowl. I don't, I don't know how to do the fancy like one hand crack. I mean, I can attempt it. Ari, are you ready for this? Okay, that, that, that did not, that did not work. I'm pretty sure now I got shells all up in my shit. Well, you know, that's why guys, it's uh, for all the home chefs out there. It's good to know your limits and what you can and cannot do. Good. No shells. Look at this. And you know, a lot of people beat their eggs with a spoon. That's not how you do it. You can do it with a fork, but you can also do it with a chopstick because you need that little air in between the two. So now you lift it up, right? And then you go in this motion. This kind of circular up and down, in and out, circular motion. You see that? Now your egg's getting beaten, baby. Yeah. That's how I beat my eggs every morning. See, now you got a really nice egg texture. All right, so that's how you beat your eggs. Now you got a really nice consistency, two eggs. This is a breakfast for one. We basically did all our prep, okay? So we got our eggs. We're gonna scramble that, fry that up, put some kimchi on top, and then we're gonna make our miso soup. So let's start with a little kombu. We're gonna cook the seaweed, and then we're gonna mix in our miso paste. Super easy. I don't even need a knife. Kombu, what is kombu? That is seaweed. It's what gives you an actual umami. Uh, you can use dashi, like powder con, hon, hon dashi as well. But kombu is just kind of more authentic. A lot of ramen dishes use this as a base. And for good miso soup, you just want a little bit of that. Now, I got this in my local Japanese market. It says, for soup stock, and includes recipe. Okay? Now, let, let's, let's take this out. It comes with instruction manuals, kind of like an Ikea cabinet. So first, it says, uh, clean the kombu. Okay, we did that already and then soak the kombu in water. While the kombu is bringing up to a boil, we're gonna start our eggs. Canola oil. This is not gonna be like your French style scrambled egg that like Gordon Ramsay or like, you know, Wolfgang Puck makes or whatever. This is gonna be kind of high heat, kind of how my dad made it growing up. You know, I think a French egg you cook in really low heat, very delicately with like, you know, uh, butter or creme fraiche or something. It's just gonna turn out like a mushy baby food. I don't like it. I want my egg to be like nice and silky, but still have a little chew. Just don't touch it, okay? I'm just feeling it. Just feeling the heat. It's like the Westminster dog show when those dog trainers stick their hand under a dog's like crotch so you can feel the heat. That's how you know it's a thoroughbred. All right, now it's getting really hot. I'm gonna slowly put in the egg. You hear that sizzle? Oh, that's nice, that's nice. So now if you don't move it, it's just gonna be an egg omelet. I like the high heat, that's why a little bubble come, forms on the side. And I'm gonna keep stirring it. You gotta stir it kinda quick with a chopstick, you know? Now you got that real silky texture. And before you know it, bam, it's done. Take it off the heat, that's it. How, how long did that take, five seconds? That's it. Get yourself a plate here. Plate, 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 need a plate. Very large plate, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Put a plate here. You see how silky that is? Oh, that's silky. That's nice. Check that out. Check that out. That is silky. So that's some silky eggs. Actually, honestly, I could have took it off even faster. Literally, it took five seconds when all is hot, okay? So what I'm going to do, there's no salt, right? You can add salt. You can add pepper to each his own. What I like to do, I like to do just a little bit of sesame oil to give it that nutty flavor because we're going to mix this with kimchi. So you might as well make this taste like very nice and Korean. Look at that drizzle, drizzle of sesame oil. And then you're gonna need a little bit of kimchi, okay? 
Let me get a clean pair of chopsticks here. Any kimchi you buy from the store, I'm sure people know how to make their own as well. Uh, we're not doing that right here on this channel. We're just uh, using some store-bought kimchi. This one's good. Cosmos. Cosmos lactose fermented kimchi. Still, you can use a little bit of pepper. And for salt, I like to use soy sauce on my eggs. Just a little drizzle of soy sauce all around. Bam! Look at how silky that egg is right there that's gonna be delicious okay now it's been about 20 minutes we brought it up to a boil the kombu has now expanded and it has done its job i think some of these you can eat these we're just gonna put aside okay so now as you can see the water has um it still doesn't have any salt in it it just has a little murkiness that's really the dashi flavor the umami that you want once again, you can use those pellet hondashis, but this is real dashi umami from the sea. So now we'll put that aside. You just have a nice base now. We're gonna use our miso paste. So this, uh, there's so many kinds of miso out here. Um, this one, it's a little darker. There's also white miso. To each their own, they're all very, very good. Uh, I feel like as long as they got some Japanese writings on it, it's probably pretty legit. I'm not Japanese, but uh, I do enjoy good miso. So I'm just gonna get a spoonful of this. Once again, we're eyeballing. This is about half a pot of this tiny pot. We're gonna get a spoonful. You see, it doesn't really melt in all the way. So what I do, use a little chopstick or whisk actually to break it down. So chopstick on the spoon, break it all the way down and then just let it boil for one second. This is great. We got kimchi, we got miso. This is your probiotic breakfast, baby. That looks a little watery. So I'm gonna add another half a spoon. It's really to your liking. You can make your miso soup thicker. You can make it thinner. You can even add a little salt in it. I actually don't like to add any salt because the miso already has a salty flavor. I'll try it right here. Oh, that's really good. It's just such a homey feel with the miso soup. It's so comforting. And with the dashi, it adds an extra layer of flavor. It's not necessarily salty, but like I said, it's umami. It's that je ne sais quoi in a lot of Japanese food. This is perfect. So let it bring to a boil just for a little bit. It's already done. I can't really find a ladle. Uh, I have this very big plastic spoon. So I'm gonna pour it in the bowl. Now, and the bowl I'm using was the bowl that we made scrambled eggs out of. There's still a little bit of egg on the bottom, right? Raw egg, it's fine. But we're gonna put this boiling hot soup over it. So now you almost got yourself like a egg drop miso. Look at that. I'm not wasting one bit of that egg. And when you uh, pour miso soup or serve it, make sure you stir it a little bit because it does kind of go to the bottom there. All right, look at that. Egg drop miso. Ooh. Ooh. Come on, man. That's nice. And now we have our beautiful Jimmy's breakfast. Eggs, kimchi, miso soup, right? They probably charge you this $50 at Ritz-Carlton and call it like the Oriental special or tour of Asia or something stupid. We did this in like 10 seconds. And guess what? Of course, top it off, we're going to put a little bit of scallions on top to give it that color look at that 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 bam bam and now it's time for the taste test this is the same pair of chopsticks i used earlier for the soup just a little bit of the egg look at how silky that is mm. oh my god the perfect nuttiness from the sesame oil just a little touch of soy sauce you can put more salt put more soy sauce on it i like mine a little light mm. Mmm. And this has nice structure to it, this egg. There's a nice bite. It's not just like a mushy baby food, like French egg. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mix it in with a little kimchi. It's a burst of flavor. Burst of probiotics. It's good for you. It's how you start your morning. They always say, you know, Eat food from different color spectrum. You now you got every morning you got yellow, green, red. This is the business right here, man. I like the little 
leafy part. I like that. Mix that with a little bit of eggs. Mmm. It's so simple and so good. I don't know why when I'm eating this, I'm, I'm like putting my, my, my hand in, my, in front of my mouth like a, like a Japanese woman. It's like, oh, oh, oh so, 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 so. Uh, and let's try the soup. Start your day with a heartwarming bowl of miso soup with a little bit of egg drop in it. Man, scallions really does a lot of the work because the soup is so simple. The dashi just fills up the void of flavor, you know, because miso maybe just a little salty, has already umami. But when you have that kombu dashi flavor, it just rounds up your entire flavor palette and makes everything better. Mm. Oh my God. It's so good. I can't, I can't tell you how good this is. This is what I eat almost every morning. It's probably why I'm so in shape. I have a six pack underneath this in case you guys can't tell. Guys, we did it. The breakfast of champions. The breakfast of Asian champions. Eggs with kimchi and of course a miso soup. And it's so simple. The eggs took five seconds. The miso soup, if you didn't do it with the kombu, you don't have the seaweed, it's fine. That's just literally boiling water and miso paste. How easy is that? And thank you guys for supporting this channel. We're getting about like 750,000 subscribers. It's crazy. You know, a lot of you guys I know know me as a stand-up or an actor, but now you come to my show to watch this cooking and we're gonna have more guests, more friends to join me cook, teach me how to cook, and sometimes maybe I can teach them a couple of things. You know, like every comedian has a podcast, I have my own cooking show where I talk to my friends. Hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you for subscribing, watching, and checking out my other stuff, my stand-up, my movies. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna do more stand-up, I'm gonna do more cooking videos, I'm gonna do more movies. It's all for you guys. Don't you guys feel like such professionals when we say cameras are rolling? Oh yeah.